Last time that I checked, it was five chains on my neck. It was no smut on my rep. Last time that I checked, I was selling zones in the set. Make a quarter mil, no sweat. Last time that I checked, I'm the streets voice out west. Legendary self made progress. Last time that I checked, first you get the money, then respect, and the power in the hoes come next. Last time that I checked. I have one guy as an X Factor for Detroit this year. I, to be honest with you, I didn't even know who this guy was until I did a little bit of research, but his name is James Houston. So James Houston is going to be the guy across from Aiden Hutchinson. James Houston last year had eight sacks and seven games played. He had eight, obviously he's not going to sustain that type of play, but he also had an 88.2 pass rush grade according to PFF, which was seventh among edge rushers that were qualified. If that guy can even come close to maintaining that kind of play. Check, check, it was five chains on my neck. It was no smut on my rep last time that I checked. I was selling zones in the set. Make a quarter mil, no sweat last time that I checked. I'm the streets voice out west. Legendary self made progress last time that I checked. First you get the money, there is respect. And the power in the hoes come next last time that I checked. You. Tube. This is your boy, Avery Giovanni, Spirit of Detroit Podcast. I got a special show for you today, and I'm actually going to get serious today about James Houston. I love James Houston. 6'1", 245, out of Jackson State. Transferred from Florida to Jackson State to play with Coach Prime. And was a pass rush specialist. Now, you can talk about whatever you want in terms of HBCU competition, but he proved in 2022 when he came in for seven games and he amassed eight sack totals. Half a sack here, half a sack there. It was, it was, it was immense. It meant something. His career meant something. He meant something to the city, especially. In 2022, James Houston had seven games played with eight sacks, 11 tackles, and was a monster. He was a problem from Thanksgiving all the way to the end of the season. He was a problem. Opposing teams couldn't stop him, seemed like. And honestly, who could? I mean, he was a guy who was cut at the end of training camp, cut, picked up on the practice squad and had to perform and didn't play until after Thanksgiving, till Thanksgiving. He had to really hustle and work. And I, 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 I love this story. I did. I really did. As a person who follows prospects, HBCU prospects especially, I loved his story. But I feel like this year is a defining moment for James Houston. I feel like the opportunities are dwindling. The defensive end job for James Houston is there to lose. It's to me, it's wide open at the spot. The Detroit Lions brought in with the vets from Canada who amassed 19 sacks. He's 29 years old, going on 30. They also brought in Marcus Davenport, who's someone they kind of covet because he has uh, a certain amount of length, strength, and we can get him back to that 2020 one year he could be a dominant force on the outside opposite of Aiden Hutchinson but where does that leave James Houston it seems like we forgot because we won without him because in 2023 he only came in for a couple games I believe he hurt his leg broke his leg and when he came in for a couple games and he was out, we just had to keep moving without him. And we got the same, if not three more sack total numbers than we did the previous year. So more individuals were playing and had the opportunity to play in his absence but we only amassed three more sacks. 
And when you bring this up to Lions fans, they say, well, what does he really have? He was a flash in the pan. And I understand that. But where do we see in history? Corey Hyder, Corey Hyder came in for Matt Patricia. My message is this year is a defining moment in James Houston career. It is. You can call me dramatic. You can call me a yellow journalist. You can call me all this other stuff. But this year is a defining moment. He was able to re-sign to the team as a tendered free agent. I think he's going to be buried on the depth chart this year. I really do. They barely played him enough in the Kansas City game. They barely played him in the playoffs. This is a pass rush rate. 89% 89% in 2022 and they barely played him he was getting to the pass rusher he was getting to the quarterback at an alarming rate and they barely played him and his story reminds me similar of Corey Hyder or Kerry Hyder back in the past for the Detroit Lions Kerry Hyder came in as a defensive tackle undersized Played, I believe, for Matt Patricia's defense, amassed eight sacks. They didn't bother re-signing him. They didn't bother. They looked at him as a flash in the pan. He went to San Francisco, got some quality sacks there, quality time on task, just disappeared. And that's what I fear is going to happen to uh, James Houston. It seems people forgot the legend and they simply ignore the man. And I believe in James. Big James Houston moving forward. And it's going to be a very big key. Do not under any circumstance go in zone. Do not play linebacker. Your goal is to be a pass rusher. I was very disappointed in the Lions coaching staff last season against the Seahawks when they chose to put him in a zone defense and cover a tight end that was 6-5. I was very disappointed in the Lions coaching staff that they took a pressure player, as they would say, a pressure player, and they did not, under any circumstances, allow him to pressure they did not allow him to have 30 snaps on defense and to me it was political to me it was we have Julian Aquara we have we had Romeo Aquara we have to pay those we're paying those guys we are we're, we're paying them give them the opportunities we have Charles Harris Charles Harris is our captain. Give him the opportunity. Charles Harris was benched by Baltimore game. Charles Harris is off the team because he couldn't he couldn't cut it. And we have talented individuals on the back end sitting on the bench. Now again, he was hurt this season. But I have a feeling, an inkling in my soul that since the fans forgot and I have to go to war with the fans about the legend, I wouldn't put it past the coaching staff that they forgot. So, James, whether you play in Detroit for another five years, ten years, one year Put it all on the line. Make it happen. Because what I don't want, I don't want you to be forgotten about in the NFL. What I don't want is you to be a guy who nobody knows. 
And I'm not saying this in a mean way or a, um, I don't know, disrespectful way. I don't want James Houston to be an anecdote. Oh, remember that time we had the guy with the, yeah, we had him. That's how they approach Kerry Hyder. And when Kerry Hyder signed his one year contract with the Cowboys on a prove it deal for a million dollars, and then he went to San Fran and Houston and all these other teams, nobody cared. But if they brought up Kerry Hyder today, oh yeah, he is the guy from the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in infamy. It's not in respect. It's not in none of that stuff. He balled out for us and he disappeared. That's what I don't want from Houston. I want Houston to go into those practices and go into those meetings and go into every positional workout and dominate every positional workout. Not just for me, not just for the city, not for the team, for himself. That way, a team like the 49ers, a team like the Chargers, a team like the Steelers can grab him. And you think I'm kidding when I say that you forgot about the legend of James Houston. This is an interview that I'm going to put in this video. And you can read into it however you like. This is a video of Amon Ra talking about positional needs like a day or two days before the draft. I want you to hear what he says, and I want you to really think about what he's saying. I want you to look at his body language, and I want you to understand what he's saying and doing. For most of you, you're not going to think this in depth, and I understand. <laughs> I'm not trying to elicit any emotion out of you. I'm literally trying to get you to understand. This is so wide open, even Amon Ra could see it. Let's cut to the video. Uh, of course, draft coming up ASAP. I just want to know, what do you think the Detroit Lions are picking up Ooh, in the first round? Unless because the, the, your draft class, no matter what what round you go in, your draft class is predominantly judged upon by your first round. Right. What do you think y'all doing day one? I, I can't. I can't tell you. I have no idea. Um, the needs people would say would be receiver, edge, corner. I guess. Um, two good edges. Aiden. 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 In the, in the former, former first round pick. He was, he was solid. Yeah. Was he with the Saints? Yeah. Davenport. Yeah. We got him. Yeah. Was it you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just picked him up. Yeah. Um, but just. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's a solid edge. Anyways. They didn't even mention you, James. They didn't even mention you. Eight sacks due to injuries. You came through, you got the position, you got started, you you came from the bottom, now you're here. Didn't even mention you. They mentioned a guy who has less than four sacks on a season last year. They mentioned a guy who's been on three teams in the last three years. They mentioned a guy whose telltale season was 2021. When you were still, still with Florida, this is ridiculous. I want James Houston, if you're hearing this, or if you're a James Houston fan, or if you understand the competition, the level of competition in football, especially with uh, your own teammates and trying to make that starting job, I want y'all to reach out to James Houston or James Houston, if you're hearing this, like I, to reiterate, I want you to look yourself in the mirror I want you to look at this interview and I want you to say last time I checked, I was the man in these streets. This is Avery Giovanni, Spirit of Detroit Podcast. Like, comment, subscribe. James Houston, it's now or never. Let's go.